guys, this is Fernando with Order to Fest. So if you're watching this video, you're at a point where you've already disassembled your turbo, you've already cleaned it, and you're ready to open up your Order to Fest parts, uh, specifically your uh, bullet compressor wheel right here and your Rebuild Kit. Uh, before we go into these, I want to show you a couple things. One of them being uh, why we do certain things and why we recommend certain things. Uh, normally, when you're uh, rebuilding a turbo, right, you're going to have to remove it. When you remove it, you're going to bolt it off of here, right? And then obviously, you're going to find yourself with what's called the exhaust bag pressure valve, right? Which is this guy right here. This guy right here. And so this opens, this actuates right here, this whole thing. See? It's great, but it leaks like crazy. And to rebuild it, it's rather expensive. Most guys, if you have a manual, by the way, what this is going to happen is it's going to soak your clutch and it's going to give you a false positive for a slipping clutch. In other words, you're going to think your clutch is bad and really it's just soaked in oil and eventually it, it causes a premature failure. So one of the things we uh, like to do is delete this guy just because it creates a mess. So look at this. We delete it with this guy. This is the our uh, this is our delete kit right here. Uh, that being said, we take the time. I personally take the time and I seal this puppy up and I put a tamper proof on it. So you guys know that as soon as you receive it, it is good to go. That being said, the next option or the next uh, part that we have in our EVB delete kit is or that comes with the kit, it is the high flow outlet. We get this ass a lot. What is the EVB delete kit? What does it entail? Number one, you delete the shaft, right? Number two, you delete that flap, right? With this guy. So doing that gives you about 60, 80 degrees cooler on EGTs when you're towing, faster spool, yada, yada, yada. That being said, all right, let's compare these guys. So you're at a point again, you're rebuilding the turbo. You're at a point where you get your box your billet wheel we open this guy up all right so we open this guy up all right and so you see this beautiful artwork right here all right is our billet compressor wheel as you see here compared to what's normally known as the stock GTP 38 uh, wheel this wheel is extremely prone to uh, surging uh, that why that that's one of the reasons why uh, we like to upgrade the wheels and not only is this going to eliminate this dual plane wheel is going to eliminate the surging issues it has taller blades it has wider blades and way more aerodynamics sounds pretty cool it gives you about four to nine psi more boost uh, it gives you about 60 degrees cooler and therefore obviously about 15 20 ish performance uh, 20 ish uh, horsepower that being said it is much lighter, so it's going to spool even better. The next thing that we're going to look at is the, again, the bullet compressor wheel and rebuild kit. When you buy both of these together, you save about $20. Uh, so let's open this guy up. You're going to receive this. You're going to get instructions on your kit. Uh, for the purposes of the kit, I mean, uh, of the video, I'm going to hand tighten everything. But you should follow instructions as far as the torque specs on everything. So what does the rebuild kit bring? Obviously, it brings our awesome uh, business card brings uh, brand new o-rings all right vine o-rings for the top and pedestal top top and bottom of the pedestal um, these as well all right very good quality o-rings 
and bolts, all new bolts. Again, you have your piston seals. All right. There you go. And then you have your 360. And of course, your uh, journal bearings. So at this point in time, got to grab some oil to lubricate all the stuff, but ideally, uh, you've already cleaned most of these things. We're at a point where we're about to assemble this. It's already clean. All right. All this stuff is clean. Again, we clean the, uh, very important to clean this part of the turbine wheel and shaft right here. This is where that piston uh, seal is going to go on to, and you don't want any carbon buildup right here. Very, very important. Otherwise, it's going to leak. Otherwise, it's going to fail and not uh, function like it should. The next thing is the center cartridge. If you can take care of this guy and clean under here, I recommend it. Grab yourself a brush, clean all this stuff right here. This is where the other, this is where the exhaust uh, piston seal seals. Very important. If you guys have a failure where the wheels or the, something fails, and you see this guy has a groove here, right? But you see just marks or just you know just crazy scratches which is unlikely but if you see them you got to replace this guy same thing for the backing plate if you guys see crazy crazy um, just scratches or gouges or something like that you got to replace this stuff we now have these new uh, on the website you got to replace it otherwise you're gonna leak oil so the next really just the thing to the, the next thing to do on your um, on the path of rebuilding the turbo it's just gathering up your supplies. So we're at a point where really we gotta assemble certain things. Um, so the first thing, the first couple things you're gonna need is your center cartridge, your turbine wheel, and then now what we're gonna do is we're gonna add this piston seal or piston ring. Uh, so it's just a matter of working this thing in there. But uh, actually, let me get a piston ring clamp or not clamp uh, pliers you can do this with your hands but I prefer to do this with the pliers all right we're back so what I like doing with this guy is there you go Now we're gonna lubricate this guy off camera here. All right. You wanna add oil on that gap right there. All right, move this puppy around. All right now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna again lubricate our journal bearings, all right. First guy in, your oil slinger, right, or your spacer, your other bearing, right, and now this is the tricky part. A lot of guys like to mess this thing up because they just want to force this thing in here, and obviously, you got to spin it around as you're pushing in, put a little bit of lubrication, and now this is the trick I've learned, or I guess. My method of doing it is you go in here, do this, right? See that? That piston ring has to go in there. So now as we're twisting this, there you go. See that? So now we got to assemble our center cartridge and turbine on the actual uh, turbine housing or exhaust housing. All right. How we're going to do that is... I'll grab our whole unit. This guy right here. 
Now gently bring this down in there. Bam. Line your holes. All right. Now we're going to proceed to adding uh, four bolts. You're going to need a 5 16 in this case with our kit. Uh, something extra I like doing, I like adding red Loctite uh, on here. Sorry about the angle, but again, we're putting the holes through here and aligning them on here and bolting those up. I personally like red Loctite uh, just because these bolts are prone to, or, or I see a lot of this, where uh, these bolts eventually over time we're talking 200,000 miles 100,000 miles they like to come loose so this is just again this is hand tight you should always follow the torque specs uh, but for radio purposes In other words, disclaimer, you should torque these down. Um, but for video purposes, I'm doing this hand tight. So next one, let me see what this will be. Alright, so that is going. Okay. Let's tighten this a little bit. That was like going in a cross pattern. All right, that's pretty strong. All right, so now the next thing to do is open up this baggie. All right, this comes with. Oh, here, let's just do this. It's going to be a lot easier. Your oil slinger, I believe it's called. But anyways, this puppy goes like this. Here, let me... Bring that guy. This guy goes through here. Alright. Now, this guy, right here, right, requires another piston seal. Or piston ring. ring. So, a lot of guys usually mess this up as well they usually just bend the hell out of these i don't know why but i like to start off on the back see right here on the back part and we're going to work with the thumbs there you go till it fully expands in with your nails see put that guy in again lubricate that by the piston all right for lubricated now we're going to grab our backing plate all right that piston seal Seals against that little part right there. We grab this guy, right? We're gonna spin in. It should click. There you go. Verify that it's good. See? There you go. So now we're gonna go ahead and add our 360. It only really goes one way. There you go. Again. Lubricate this guy. Lubricate this part right here. And now we're going to add a little cross or X O ring. On the backing plate. This is where it kind of gets tricky. You could get get a, a little bit of um, Vaseline to keep this guy on there because uh, otherwise it becomes a pain. But pretty much you have to flip this. Uh, there's only one way to put this on here because the holes are staggered. So you can't really mess this up. So I'm going to pause the video, uh, you know, because I need both hands. And I'm going to assemble it here and then I'll continue the video. All right, so we're installed here. This is what I was telling you guys. The bolt holes are staggered, so you can't really put them any other way. They only go one way. All right. So now it's a matter of adding your other bolts. Again, I like adding um, Loctite. 
You can do red Loctite. I personally use 620. That's what I have here handy. So in this case, you would assemble this. And pause the video once these are in. We already installed our uh, bolt to hold the backing plate. We're going to install our billet compressor wheel. All right, we're going to screw this guy on here. There you go. So now we got to hold the back side while we um, put this guy in. All right, so now that we're here and you hand tighten it, we're going to get a 13 millimeter. All right, we're going to hold the back obviously be careful very sharp and after it's hand tight we're going to go about a uh, quarter of a turn so in other words from 12 o'clock to three o'clock that's how much we're going to tighten this by hand after that's tight the matter of putting our compressor or compressor outlet or yeah all right so for this section it's kind of tricky uh, after we we're going to lubricate the o-ring first then install it then after that we're going to use a, an o-ring pick kind of walk around the whole o-ring make sure it's not twisted or anything like that and um, that should be it as far as uh, that part after you install the o-ring it should look something like this then we're going to go ahead and put our uh, compressor uh, housing quick way to line this up if you look at this part right here all right lines up with this part so we'll just grab it right here there you go well, I gotta put this guy down first but there you go oh yeah let me put these bolts down and I'll grab the video again so now this guy's pretty much assembled with our billet compressor wheel. See, so because it spins freely, this is a successful install. So pretty straightforward, guys. Pretty easy. Uh, let me show you now. Obviously, the the wastegate actuator uh, bolts up here, and then you got the two bolts. I'll do that in uh, shortly. But primarily the most important part right now is going to be the high flow outlet that we were talking about earlier. Now, uh, once we get this guy right here, it literally just aligns, it seals like so with the bolts. Now you can see it has a straight path with no flap preventing it from uh, having high flowing exhaust coming through.